Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Darkness Ablaze, make sure you go ahead and check out the Poe Town store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using the code OmniPoke. For today's video, it's going to be the first of hopefully a new series. If you guys enjoy this, let me know with a like and comment and stuff down below. This is going to be 100 games with, and this is trying to give you a good insight into really what it means to playtest decks. And I wanted to start with something I was super comfortable with, possibly one of the best decks in the format right now, adp -zation. And it's exactly as it sounds. I played and documented 100 games with adp -zation. In fact, this exact 60 that's right in front of you. Now, obviously I've played more than 100 games of adp -zation, uh, even in this format. So I've played a bunch on tabletop. I, I've played a few online tournaments here and there, but this is the exact 60 that I went in uh, with and I've uh, sort of taken notes of my win-loss against every single deck, had some notes along the way as well um, to really sort of document um, my journey uh, with the deck and sort of really give me some good evidence and things to look back on to have more empirical decisions when I'm deciding to make changes potentially to this list. Uh, and why I enjoy the list that's in front of you so much. So just quickly going over the 60 before we jump into the spreadsheet that I've done. Uh, there's a few things uh, to sort of look at uh, from the YouTube video that I had at the start of the format uh, with this deck. It's actually not deviated too much. Uh, I've added the Zamazenta in. Uh, it definitely does help out against Eternatus. Um, because it can give you a bit of leeway here and there. If ever you are allowed to ultimate ray, you're already super ahead in that game. Uh, but it means that an ultimate ray into a Zamazenta attack means you're not even looking for boss most of the time against the Eternatus player. You just need one boss the entire game, which is really, really easy. Um, alternatively, it just gives you that sort of breathing space where you can try and combine Zamazenta Mani. Sometimes they miss the boss, especially if you can like more wild them down as well so they don't have Crobats to draw that certain turn. So the Zamazenta and the more wild together, I think are two really important cards to make that Eternatus matchup as strong as I believe it is. Um, so that's definitely one of the only changes that I've made, to be honest. Uh, other than that, uh, I think it's relatively similar to where it used to be. I actually cut the toughness capes that I was initially playing in this list. Uh, just when I was like doing early theory, um, thinking that it was going to be helpful in mirror match situations where your Zation is tankier and stuff. And a few other situations kind of cropped up here and there where you can give yourself a bit more hit points and it can be quite beneficial. Uh, for example, Zamazenta again, you can just make it tankier so their one prize stuff can't get for you so easily. Um, but ultimately, I just said, I want more Cherish Balls. I just want the deck to work as much as possible. And I think that's really going to be the sentiment I take whenever I am doing this 100 games of series. I want to be comfortable to play many, many games over. Think about going into regional championships. Uh, if it's a <coughs> nine round day one, um, you want to be able to, you know, that can be uh, like 27 games. You want to make sure that your deck's working as often as possible. And then you have day two and all that sort of stuff. So you can play a lot of rounds in regionals and special events and uh, even things like League Cups. You actually play like a silly number of rounds if you go to game three every single time. So um, you want your deck to work as much as possible. And I think this simplified build should really demonstrate that quite a lot. Uh, a lot of Pokemon draw power in here. Dedenne, Crobat, Eldegoss and Oracorio GX. So tons of dig potential with this list. And I think that's one of the things I liked most about the 60. Not much else to be said here. I don't think there's anything like no glaring omissions really from the list. Not seeing turbo patches. I haven't enjoyed them in the list at all. Um, they're just way less consistent than, uh, you know, the other cards you can be playing in the 60. A slightly lower support account perhaps than a lot of other decks um, where you'd see potentially even like four money, four boss. Um, but I'm really trying to lean into getting as much value from like Crobat and Dedenne as possible. And let's face it, uh, you only really want to like you know, because you're trying to make ADP only last, like, four turns, um, if you, like, GX into boss boss plays, like, that's the dream, that's why everyone dislikes ADP right now and wants it gone, uh, you're trying to make the game as short as possible, so you only really want to weave in, like, a couple of research in there, a money here or there, if you're, um, on the back foot, or against some specific archetypes, so... Um, yeah, I feel like this support account works very nicely for me all in all. So yeah, that's the list and we're going to be going through the results that I have now as well. Um, I'm just going to have to shimmy this over here and we're going to go for the display capture. Here we go. So I have made a spreadsheet. This will not be a surprise to you. Let me let me make my head smaller so you can actually see the wins and losses here. 
Um, so spoilers, my total wins of the 100 games was 73. My total losses was 27. So obviously that's a 73% win rate because we're doing 100 games. And you can see I had, if I go across here, you can see uh, the number of games that I was playing, what deck I was coming up against, whether I went first or second. Obviously every time on PTGO it's a coin flip. So I was choosing to go first. So you'll see that I had more games going first than I had going second because it was always my choice to go first if I did win the coin flip my end and there are also a number of decks mostly like welder decks like center scorch and stuff who would make me go first if I lost the coin flip anyway so naturally this deck goes first more often is what I found from the 100 game sample size and your win rate is significantly higher uh, going first as you can see um, almost an 80% win rate um, when you are the player going first as ADP with only a 65% win rate going second so even with that supporter rule change, <laughs> there's quite a big disparity uh, between uh, going first and going second. And ADP certainly wants to be the player going first. There's no doubt about that because just a turn one attachment on ADP is so little to ask for. And it lets you play much more conservatively with your bench. And it also lets you keep all of your draw for that late game when you're making the pushes towards boss plus sorcerer attach. Those sorts of things. So keeping enough draw within the deck for the late game just kind of stamp proofs you makes you a lot like more safe against aggro plays and this is obviously an aggro deck after the first two turns of being like a sleeping giant you like immediately just turn on the gas and try and win in the following two turns so uh keeping your crobats your dedenes your elder gosses all that sort of stuff is really important <coughs> i've also um put a few notes here now some of the time these are <coughs> uh pretty like soft notes for most wins i didn't put that many notes and you'll see that I kind of got lazy later on that there wasn't quite as many notes going on but um uh definitely on the losses I wanted to I wanted to highlight uh, the reasons why I lost a lot of the time now I want to say I play ADP Zation to a relatively high standard I've like I'm super comfortable with the archetype and I'd already put in a decent number of games before I did this sort of like self challenge that I put to myself um just over the like it's not been a long time it's been like three days to do this um but Hopefully I'm playing to like a reasonable standard. I don't feel like there were many games where I lost myself the game by making mistakes. Uh, I think I highlighted just one game against Eternatus where I um, proactively played Zamazenta and it just wasn't correct. So I think I, I threw like one game like that I'm aware of and obviously there could have been mistakes as I went through. But I, I want to say that it was a relatively high standard of play for ADPization at least. And let's be honest, it's not the most complicated deck to play because it is relatively rinse and repeat in a lot of the situations. Uh, there is a few decision-making moments when you're sacking off that GX altogether and going for just like other prize routes and stuff like that. Um, but definitely as I you know got through these games, I feel like I got more comfortable with the deck. I don't think my win rate was too different like from the first 50 and the second 50. So it's not like I showed much improvement, if that makes sense. Um, but that's also kind of the virtue of the ladder. Sometimes you just come into worse matchups or whatever else. So um, I don't think it, it was going to be that obvious. Like you wouldn't, it wouldn't be that clear to see if there was like a big improvement where maybe the first 50 games I had, you know, like twice as many losses as the second 50, um, which hopefully indicates A, that um, it's more matchup based and B, that my standard was relatively similar throughout those 100 games. I don't think there was like big disparity because again I'm pretty comfortable with the deck so uh yeah I wanted to highlight a few notes here and there obviously if you're trying to um do this for yourselves and I really do recommend doing this if you are testing for tournaments right now obviously we only have online tournaments to go off of so not quite the same amount of data that you would usually use towards uh, making deck building choices and decisions so you've got to do the data yourself really and I've done this um you know pre-worlds and pre-big tournaments uh, before um, the CCG guys often try and have this spreadsheet around where we can all input our data as well um, so doing this is really a good deal and you get more out of it the more you put in so if you were to be more detailed with your notes have other things going on here as well uh, you can personalize it to yourself um, obviously the 100 games I took was just with one 60 card list I didn't make any changes and normally when you're doing playtesting, you will want to have a sub, like, this will be a fine sample for step one of the deck. And then I'd be at that stage now where I'd be thinking about different cards I could include, which I put down here, which we'll get onto in a moment. And then I try, you know, a version two list or whatever. Like, this is already like a version two or three of ADPization for me, at least. Um, because I've already put in those prior games and that's why I got to the initial 60 that I showed you at the start. Uh, but after this 100 games, I've now thought about these potential tech includes. I'll try and show you what's like more flexible in the list and say, 
potentially what I feel I'm comfortable cutting or anything like that um, to try and work in these cards. Uh, right now, I don't actually think my list's... Like, my list is so basic that there are actually, like, not many cards that I'd like to cut outside of, like, excess cards, if that makes sense. All the cards I've, I've got are to make it as cookie-cutter and simple as possible. And I think that kind of is demonstrated by the fact that um, I only lost to... Uh, donks slash like dead hands twice in a hundred games, which is very very low. Uh, I lost to whiffing <laughs> boss's orders five times. I lost to whiffing a turn two jet stack only three times in a hundred games. If I wanted to, uh, now obviously there'll be situations where I whiffed that GX attack on turn two, but still won the game, or uh, I chose to go you know like uh, against the ADP roots. But I'm saying that. 90% of the time, the deck basically functioned exactly how I wanted it to um, because it wasn't down to whiffing or bricking or um, anything like that. So that's a really good indicator that the deck at least is doing everything that it wants to as much as possible. Um, you can try to like kind of pause as, as you go down this. Like I said, I don't have like very, um, very detailed notes. I feel like if I was, you know, practicing for... A specific tournament or something like that i would have more insight into how i try and navigate these matchups a bit more um, but i definitely picked up a few tips and tricks like along the way as i played you know like my 10th to turn this matchup i was much more comfortable than going into it um you know earlier on so I, I definitely um had a few things here and there and these notes can be as detailed or as undetailed as you want uh, I, I would advise against most losses you definitely want to have some notes and i've done that for almost every one of my losses apart from the final few but it's already late right now and i wanted to get this video out there but yeah that's basically the long and short of it a few interesting things that came out of my results um these are all the decks that i was positive against um you're actually very very positive against eternatus and that really surprises me because eternatus is one of the front runners of the format um and adp is extremely favored against it uh from from my data um the list that i played yeah do, does a lot against eternatus i think the majority of my losses against eternatus uh was to actually hammer builds of eternatus i think i lost to three of those builds um and not much else i think i lost to one build that was able to play around oricorio very well one of the losses was down to me proactively playing that zamazanta wrong which i mentioned earlier but yeah a turn of hammers was was much more dangerous uh, than any other return to this matchup that I came up against. Other, other losses were just down to whiffs on my side, basically. Uh, but that's really about it. It's cool to see that I was actually quite favored in Mirror. Um, a lot of people think it's kind of like a no-skill Mirror. Uh, but the fact that I was basically uh, winning almost twice as many that I lost, it does show that there's some elements of skill to that. Whether you're the person going first... And well, firstly, just having a list that works more often than the opponent will already give you more wins in a mirror match situation, which I think my list naturally does. Uh, but also just knowing the situations when you are the player going second, should you push for that turn one GX attack um, just to sort of get ahead in tempo? In doing so, you're putting down your Crobats, your Dedenes, and just sort of like letting your opponent do the Gust Gust option. Or do you try and play slower, put them on like Amani, and only give them like Zacian and ADP in the early turns and give them nothing to boss? So even if you are the one going second and GXing second, um, they might have Crobats or Dedenes down and you won't. The only uh, downside of that sort of approach is now more wild can make that a bit more random. So there's a bit of nuance there, but um, definitely more than just, you know, like. Uh, GX boss boss now don't get me wrong if all things are going well that's what you want to happen if you're the one playing that mirror you want to GX first and then boss boss and the game's over right um but it's cool to see that in a mirror match situation my list was actually pretty favored center scorch was way more favored than I thought um and it actually really really surprised me I think I did actually get the good rub of the green against a couple of uh, these games and I think 100 games is actually still quite a small sample size you have to remember that um, and I, I personally felt like I was having to do a lot against the Center Scorch to stay ahead. Um, but I don't know, the, the win rate kind of speaks for itself there. Um, then you look at most of these other things where there's only like four games, two games, one game against a ton of other decks. There was 27 decks in total that, uh, I played against in the hundred games. So that shows that it's quite a, a varied format, right? But at the same time, over 50% was just the top three decks, Center Scorch, ADP and Eternatus. They are definitely the most popular decks on ladder right now, uh, just out of reference. Uh, Mewtwo's as well. If you combine the Mewtwo's, that's a pretty popular deck also. Uh, Mewtwo's incidentally were the worst matchups, um, there. 
So I, I lost to one Charizard and didn't play another one, and lost to one um, Aerodactyl Glissopod deck, um, and I didn't play against any others. Um, the Charizard deck, I'm pretty sure, was a donk. Oh no, the ADP died before I got to GX, so he hit me for 300 on turn two, classic, um, before I was able to GX. Um, and the Aeropod game was where they were able to like boss up and kill ADP, um, again, like immediately after I GX attacked, and they were able to do that without putting down any two prize Pokemon. And the deck doesn't actually put down that many two prize Pokemon, so Aeropods might actually be an awkward matchup. But the fact that they had raw boss was kind of kind of hurt me. They had raw double boss in hand, which was pretty gross. Um, so yeah, back to the back to the main uh, sort of topic is that uh, Mewtwo seemed to be the true bad matchup for ADP. If there is any bad matchup in the format. Um, it is it is most likely going to be Welder Mewtwo. Welder Mewtwo definitely felt I definitely felt the most hopeless against Welder Mewtwo because it forces so damn much out of you. It forces um, bosses plus source of sorcerer attached because your your um, ADP is like basically never living. A four energy three hundred is just too easy for Mewtwo. A lot of Mewtwo's uh, play Zigzagoon as well, so I feel like a big charm wouldn't change that too much. Something that could potentially change that is uh, Mimikyu, so that if you are just hitting into the Mewtwo, you're then sort of stranding those energies and making them a lot less useful. At the same time, though, Mewtwo does normally still play Victini V, and uh, that will be awkward for you because it's just a two energy smack anyway. So I don't think Mimikyu is actually potentially the answer. I think more likely something like a Vitband or a Zigzagoon of your own could be more helpful. Uh, because then you can reach on the 270 of the Mewtwo, but then there's that additional headache that a lot of Mewtwo's play Big Charm anyway, so it's kind of like, yeah, I don't actually know how we can make that Mewtwo much better, because Mewtwo's just natural. like, as long as Mewtwo's doing their stuff, it's very, very awkward. Um, so something to bear in mind, potentially, you know, like, like I said, they can play around your Big Charm with their Zigzagoon, but you at least make them have more cards. The Mimikyu at least makes them have more cards. So I feel like you probably can balance that to 50-50 by trying some of these techs out. The other things I tried to think about including potentially a Fion, uh, because Mewtwo, you know, sometimes they just make one Mewtwo and then the rest of the board is just like Dedene's Crobats and stuff like that. Um, so a Fion means that you don't have to boss, which lets you dig further with your researchers and your Marnies and stuff like that to actually give yourself a win condition. Those are really the only cards I thought about adding in uh, to make the Mewtwo matchup uh, slightly easier. Let me know if you had any ideas around helping that Mewtwo matchup um, outside of having potentially a more efficient attacker that can do some numbers into them or something like that. I don't think I necessarily want to play power plants in this list. It uh, doesn't make too much sense when Mewtwo normally plays a pretty high stadium count and Marshadow anyway. If it was like if I was playing power plant, you'd change the list completely to be like power plant stamp based, and that's just not how I want, not how I enjoy playing ADP right now. Um, there's a few other sort of decks here where I only really got to play one, so it, it's not like too too helpful data, I guess you could say. Um, so. That sort of leads me to the question, do you guys want to see me continue this series where I go from 100 games to playing 1,000 games of ADP? Or would you like to see me do 100 games of a different deck? Probably starting off with Eternatus, probably moving into things like Center Scorch, Mewtwo, uh, Pika Rom has been popping up recently in tournaments, Luke Metal, I could uh, Inteleon, Frostmoth as well. Those sorts of archetypes I could definitely, you know, I could see myself playing 100 games of any of those sort of top decks. Um, I couldn't see myself playing 100 games of some of the lower tier stuff <laughs> down here. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think it would be more helpful if I continued doing games of just ADP and see and sort of like just cultivating and amassing more data for that archetype? Or do you think I should do 100 games of a different archetype? I'd like to really hear your thoughts. But uh, And also, I'd like to hear your thoughts if I should document any other things as part of my notes. So I've got going first, win rate is much higher than second. I've got my total win rate, obviously. I've kind of got um, some reasons for why I lost games. Uh, I've got some potential includes. I've got some just uh, sort of things that I felt were the most awkward things to deal with as ADP. Uh, obviously, if ADP gets knocked out pre-GX attack, you are very, very behind. If you get knocked out even on the GX attack turn, which is a lot of decks to be fair, um, you are then on the back foot where you need to draw a lot of cards. You need to find multiple sources and attaches. It's kind of why going back to the actual 60, um, I really like having Forzation because 
Uh, anytime you can get a free energy attachment from Intrepid Sword, it's just like one less saucer that you need to find as soon as ADP gets killed. So, like, it all starts from that turn one, right? You, you play so much ball search in the 60 and Forzation just on the off chance that your Intrepid Sword hits an energy because it just is it's like game winning in so many situations, getting that one extra attachment. It just means that you need less, like, by turn three, and that's like the critical turn for ADP, like, a lot, I would say. Um, you're also fairly weak to power plant yourself because you do want to have non-supporter based draw quite a lot because you're trying to boss and reset stamp especially if they boss oracorio at the same time eternatus is very good at boss stamping um and making life difficult for you uh mewtwo as well oftentimes packing double reset stamp and that's uh, a contributing factor to why we lost to some of the welder based builds um i actually don't think that the moist mew3 is actually that bad of a matchup just anecdotally um i think two of my lot definitely one loss felt like i got pretty high rolled from a very very favorable situation when my opponent triple e switched to then do pip stoys to heal off their other mewtwo which was like my mapped out win condition basically <laughs> uh, which was pretty insane they were able to like from a four card hand i remember it super vividly because it was like today that i had this game uh, they had zero energy in bo on board. They had a damaged Mewtwo, and I had four prizes to take. Um, and I, I had Duradon poked this Mewtwo, right, for uh, for 60, uh, to put it in range of a Zacian hit, basically. Um, and they went from a zero energy Mewtwo board, because they had just blown up my ADP, right? Um, they evolved into... Oh, sorry, yeah, they got the Frostmoth out, then they uh, bucketed, viridian put it all onto Frostmoth. <laughs> Uh, Dede changed, double E switched uh, to the Mewtwo on the bench, then switched into the new Mewtwo, then researched and hit the third E switch to go onto that Mewtwo, and then they also discarded a Pips Doyce with a Quick Ball, and then were able to attach two more energies to the bench dude, uh, whilst healing that bench dude with the uh, Pips Doyce attack as well. So that was pretty gross to come up against. So if that exact sequence hadn't happened, the Moist Mewtwo would be showing as a positive matchup. But I, I do think the Welder matchup is definitely unfavored. I, I feel like that's definitely awkward. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about ADP. Uh, do you think... Um, it's bannable <laughs> do you think it's uh is it something that you're happy to still see in the formats um do you think it's the best deck in the format i mean these results are you know pretty positive i i, I think 73 percent win rate is a good target for any deck uh with 100 games definitely that's like a decent sample size maybe if i play more games maybe if i play different variations of adp as well like Maybe if I tried kind of a greedier list of ADP where I played like Crushing Hammers or something like that. Maybe I played a more defensive list where I played uh, Tag Call or Malolana or like Double Zamazenta and tried a different approach against Eternatus. I could try so many things with this series, but I just kind of wanted to introduce this to you guys because it's something that we should really be doing with our playtesting, to be honest. Like it, it's something you see a lot in Hearthstone and obviously um, Hearthstone uh, sort of has Deck Tracker and they can do a lot of this stuff for you, which is like... Uh, a big reason why um, it's so common, but there are tons of like data reapers uh, in that um, card game, uh, and you don't see it so much in Pokemon. I feel like 100 games, you know, it's done in three days. I'm sure there are players that are doing these stats and stuff, um, but when there are no tournaments going on, there's not that much motivation. Um, so trying to get my mindset in the right place um has given me a lot more motivation to keep playing pokemon right now and working towards this sort of mini goal of 100 games has uh made playing the ladder more interesting for me personally so maybe you guys could find that for yourselves as well um i've been rambling this has definitely been a rambly video but it's also kind of like a, a primer or an introduction to this new 100 games or series let me know if you enjoy looking at these stats and if you found it interesting to talk about adp let me know what you guys what you guys think about my list as well. Uh, we'll hop back to that real quick. Uh, just for a little reminder. Um, what have you been playing that's different to this list? What have you found the most difficult matchup to be as ADP? Is there any deck that I haven't faced enough to give yourself relevant data? I'll hear it all down below. But uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this slightly different video. And hopefully it's something I can be producing for you guys in the future. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.